A new code of practice for the police came into effect yesterday that will protect freedom of speech by ensuring officers record non-crime hate incidents only when absolutely necessary. Yes, the new code of practice will safeguard people's fundamental right to freedom of expression, protect their personal data and ensure that non-crime hate incidents are not recorded when someone is merely offended. More on this, we're joined now by former Scotland Yard detective Peter Blexley. Good morning to you, Peter. Um, no doubt you will think this is a long overdue return to common sense. Why on earth are police spending so much time policing our tweets when they should be policing our streets? Indeed I do, and credit where it's due to the Home Secretary. Back in March, she said she wanted to create clarity over non-crime hate incidents. And three months later, we have this code of conduct now, which came into force yesterday. Very interestingly, with reference to your earlier article about that abominable shirt that somebody was wearing at football yesterday, one of the expressions used in this code of conduct is intentionally hostile. And I think that fits very nicely with, uh, with, with regards to that incident. So you think that it was correct that that gentleman was arrested? Because it is so interesting, isn't it? As you say, that law came into effect yesterday and it's the same time, almost, when that man was wearing such an offensive shirt. Undoubtedly. And uh, I very much doubt if that coward would have had the courage or the stupidity to wear that shirt around the streets of Liverpool. Um, I think perhaps summary justice, which I could never condone, might have uh, found its way in, in his direction. But yes, the police have got themselves in a tangle over non-crime hate incidents, by and large around people that might be preaching, who have beliefs, faiths that they firmly adhere to, and they choose to spread it. But of course, it can be particularly offensive to many other people. And only the other day, I was in Oxford Street in central London, and there was somebody preaching what they truly believe. And to me, it was particularly hateful. But the question is, is it a crime? Should that person be dragged off the streets and thrown in a cell? And should it be recorded as a crime? And I think the answer in that instance, instance was, was probably no. Yeah, Peter, you know, non-crime hate incidents, they started out with good intent, didn't they? They were introduced after the Stephen Lawrence murder, um, tracing hate around um, race, around ethnicity, around your sexual orientation. But then the trans movement came in and then social media, more to the point, emerged. And it really became a Pandora's box for the perceived offence of somebody became a police matter. It was nonsense, wasn't it? It was, and then somebody, again, very stupidly, took uh, a symbol, a symbol uh, which was previously linked to, to hatred, and put pride colours on it, posted it on social media, and found themselves being arrested. Um, unfortunately, there are no levels to some people's stupidity. Um, and, 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 of course, it's not a crime to be stupid. If it was, we simply couldn't build enough jails. <laughs> but I'm sure the police will welcome this code of conduct, and I, mm. I hope it gives them some clarity. I think there's going to be bumps in the road, as there always is with new codes of practice and new laws, as people try and push the boundaries and the police try and establish through the courts exactly what is a crime and what isn't. But, mm. as, I, as I mentioned earlier, uh, credit to the Home Secretary for just three months later bringing this code of practice mm. into force. Really interesting time for policing, isn't it, Peter? Because it seems as though we are re-examining the perimeters of policing at the moment. We're talking about mental health call-outs yeah. uh, just a, a week or two ago and the, the police will no longer be responding to those from September. And now we're talking about uh, not dealing with, with essentially offensive comments on Twitter. We're going to get back to police officers fighting crime and being bobbies on the beat once again. Well, that is something that I've called for for a, a very long time. And if this is part of a, a sea change, shall we say, whereby the police are going to concentrate on their core job, and, and that really is, number one, as I see it, keeping the streets safe. So I would like to see police officers patrolling the streets, something that was surrendered many years ago. Secondly, if crime is committed, 
crime as laid down by the laws of the land, mm. as opposed to what people perceive to be crime. If crime is committed, can our police promptly and properly investigate it so that victims get, a, get the service that they deserve? And then thirdly, can we lock bad people up? Because yeah. that's what we want. I know there's a problem with the prison population and, and our prisons bursting at the seams, but that's a matter for the Department of Justice. It's the police's job to arrest people. And I think all well-meaning, well-intentioned, right-thinking people would like to see bad people locked up. Yeah, Peter, I, I, can, I can hear the nation raising their, their coffee and tea mugs to you and saying cheers, mate, because you're speaking absolute common sense here. Um, 30,000 muggings went unsolved last year. 6% of burglaries solved. 120,000 of these non-crime hate incidents have been recorded at least. Would you like to see those things struck off people's records? Because don't forget, that can go on your background check and it can affect your ability to get a job. Yes, it can. Um, I'd like to see common sense uh, applied to policing here because really that is the most important thing that a police officer can, can possess. Common sense, courage and the ability to look round the corner to anticipate what might come next. And common sense policing would be welcomed, I'm sure, the length and breadth of the country. Let's focus on people committing crimes, as we all know, everybody knows what a crime is. Um, it's just that the police got themselves in a bit of a tangle in recent years. And let's find those perpetrators. Let's reinvent policing to a certain extent, because patrolling the streets is something that hasn't been done for many, many years. And I understand why it, it became a thing of the past, but it can be reinvented. Unfortunately, we've got a breed of senior police officers who have been highly educated in universities. And quite honestly, they came back to policing with their heads full of a lot of pseudo-intellectual claptrap, to be honest with you. Um, but, but basic policing, patrolling the streets and creating a hostile environment for bad people and creating that sense of fear that they might just come round the corner after committing a crime and bump into a police officer. Mm. That was a really powerful thing in years gone by. So if we can get some of the cops out of the cars, I know they've got a lot of 999 calls to go to, mm. but if we can properly apply the resources so that police officers patrol the streets, they're known to their local community, moreover, they know who the troublemakers and the criminals are, then I think that would be a really good thing. You know, Peter Blacksey, if I could reach through the screen now and shake your hand, mate, I, I honestly would. Thank you for just speaking such common sense. That that's exactly what people want to be hearing. Get from behind your desk, get out, solve some crimes, lock up some bad guys. Peter, fantastic. Top of the morning to you. Thank you. I think that's going to be really popular with you as well, watching and Brilliant. listening at home. Do let us know what you think of that story. GBBews at gbnews.com.